Hello everyone and welcome to Author Spotlight. I'm here with author Pierre Woolrich and he is the author of Getting to Grips with Not-for-Profit Governance. How are you today, Pierre? Oh, fine, thank much. Yes. Yes. Yeah, it's a wonderful book right there. There's a book. Yeah. Oh, it took awesome. a while to produce. Uh, I <laughs> bet. I bet there's so much information to just put into one book that you just, yeah, it takes a long time to whittle down. Oh, yeah, fine. I did read that sort of takes Writing books only half the story. The other half is trying to find out who will publish it for you. And if you can't find anybody, then you do self-publishing and then you have to find printers and distributors. And Yeah, it's a, whole, whole, it's, it's a whole new world, but it's an exciting it one, though. Yeah. Yeah. Um, could you, before we start, can you give us a brief overview of who you are and what this book is about? Sure. Um, Years ago, when I started working at um, probably BP, where I sort of came interested in governance, I was um, asked to join the um, staff credit union. So that was with three of us there. That was interesting. And then, like a lot of people, I um, was on the school board uh, for a few years there. I sort of looked after strategic planning and did a bit with the financials. Like we did have an accountant there, so that was good. Um, so I started life out in the public sector and then moved to BP, the private sector. Um, and at some stage of the game, I joined the Institute of Management in the Wellington branch. I got elected onto the board a couple of times there. Um, and also I jumped back, but on the school board, the um, School Trustees Association ran a um, governance course. So I went along that with an evening course. Um, so I suppose that went to my appetite. There was on the Institute of Management Board. One of the national directors published a, a tomb of something like 600 pages, hard copy, um, on corporate governance. Apparently that was the bee's knees. Um, and then on the Institute of Management, Institute of Management, we had one or two uh, people come along and talk about governance to the board and how it sort of should be working. Um, and I suppose since then I went on to the, become on the... Um, Chamber of Commerce, because by then I was working for myself. Um, and I suppose on the Institute of uh, Management in particular, I became aware that really there was very little, if anything, on um, governments in the not-for-profit sector, not-for-profit as charities and um, corporate societies. Your local club and um, societies like to be incorporated or maybe a charity. So, so at the back of my mind for some time, I've sort of been thinking about writing something. So I kept the odd article too. I did a um, an e-course uh, based in the UK. For, it was a company's one. I figured that their laws are similar to ours. Even though it was a company run rather than not-for-profit, I thought the fundamentals of government and oversight of an organisation, same, pretty well the same anywhere around the world. And it doesn't matter what laws you operate with, you've got to do what's right for the organisation. Um, and then I started writing down the odd note or two, and then sort of, well, I better, better start being serious about this. Um, it's taken about three years, I suppose, something like that. I wasn't doing it full time, it was a part time sort of hobby sort of thing. That's not a bad chunk of time to be doing this, to be honest. I think there are a lot of people who would have been writing for a lot longer. Um, and so you've done a really good job of just getting all of the information and putting it into a book in such a speedy speedy rate. So not bad, not bad at all. Nice, good. Thanks, mate. I was, I was must say, near the end, I, I mean, came aware that the Incorporated Societies Act was going to be changed. So I thought, well, if I get it out before the change comes in, uh, that'd be a good thing. Now, in actual fact, it took a bit longer. It came out about the same time the act actually took effect. But uh, that, that was sort of a bonus, I suppose, that yeah. my book launch coincided with the um, act being changed. Yeah, not bad at all, actually. Very strategically planned, almost, <laughs> if it was meant to be that way. But it's, it's good that it came out that way, I think. Um, yes. What was it that made you aware that a book like this needed to be written? Well, I suppose ever since I sort of did my start off it was on a wing and a prayer, uh, learning on the job. And then I suppose way back, um, British Airways had a major catastrophe try, taking out Freddie Laker Airlines and they got hauled over the coals. And then the, the um, 
chairman, I think it was, or might have been a CEO, came out here and gave a talk on governance. And I said, well, you know, this is pretty important, the oversight of an organisation. If it goes wrong at the top, then you're sort of, you're toast. Mm. The organisation goes down the gurgle. So I've sort of been interested for quite some time. And when that person published a book in the mid-1980s, it made me aware more so. Uh, and I guess when I started writing my book, I thought the best thing, first thing to do is see if I can see anything about governance in New Zealand, and more specifically as a book, and more specifically um, in the not-for-profit or incorporated society sector. And I'm pleased to say there's nothing. <laughs> oh, um, yeah. Yes. So even the corporate governance, there's lots, well, in, out, on, out on the big wide world, there's lots of PDFs, there's courses, there's um, workshops you can attend, but there's no actual New Zealand specific printed book available. So I thought, wow, world's my oyster. Here I come. Exactly. exactly. There's nothing quite like holding a book like that in your hands as well. I mean, it's all good and well to Google things or look up PDFs, but I think when you actually have a physical copy of something that's been so well tailored then yeah there's nothing there's nothing more valuable than that so well, humans are tactile i like feeling things in their hands yes exactly exactly i work in the book industry i know exactly what that's like um so a lot of the information in this is based on your own experiences obviously so what was your research process where did you kind of get all of your information from like you have a lot of quotes in here too so um, yeah, just wanting to know a little bit about the process of your research. Right. Well, first of all, I started jotting down a few notes on scraps of paper, as you do, and then I started putting together, or even just grouping by sub, and putting together and rewriting them. And um, over the years, obviously, I had board papers, uh, so I referred to them. I had um, colleagues who were sort of subject matter experts, so I quizzed them a bit about things. Um, I keep an eye out. Yeah, just I've got a few quotes here because you just look in the newspaper or online and, and you'll find these things going wrong quite often in the government's world. It doesn't have to be not for profit where things go wrong. Mm, uh, yeah. so there's plenty of material out there. Um, and also, when I'd sort of, I well, did use Google a bit just to find out what's going on. Why do we do that? Oh, that's why we did that. I didn't know everything. I knew we do things, but not necessarily know. Mm. Um, and obviously, had to refer to the, the both the old act, which was quite a good read. It's only twenty nine pages, quite readable. Mm. And the new act's got some like one hundred thirty odd pages. Yeah, it looks looks um, written by a different sort of person. Mm. Okay. <laughs> an index thing, and you think, well. Um, and then I did, of course, you know, say go and look on Google to see what else is happening out there yes and I mean, the end, when i had the book and a sort of a final draft i got two professional not-for-profit directors to review the book to make sure i hadn't made any glaring mistakes or um major omissions mm -hmm. sorry yeah oh well that's great i mean it seems sounds like you were very thorough and i think that yeah google's a really a good way to get a little bit of insight into things that you might not be able to find elsewhere, or it's like a nice, easy way to funnel your questions. So all of that, all avenues of research are important, I think, as well. Yes. Um, how have you found the self-publishing process? Uh, you've done, like, done that yourself. What yeah. have you learned, do you think? Well, first of all, I approached established publishers, publishers like um, Penguin Random House and Bateman. Most of them I discover, I have on the website, if you don't hear with us in three months, don't bother to contact us, we're not interested. Mm. One of them kindly came back and said I was too niche a market for them. And I thought, well, there's something like 24,000 incorporated societies and a similar number of them um, charities. I think that's quite a big 24 and they've got three people per board, three times 24, it's a big market, should everyone buy my book? <laughs> yeah. uh, so then I thought, well, now if I can't, if I have, I have to go down the self-publishing route. That's okay. Um, there's quite a bit of information out there on self-publishing, either overseas or in New Zealand. There's a couple, two or three books that tell you, you know, what to do. So I bought one of the NZ books and obviously looked online. Mm -hmm. um, 
And then I thought, well, the next thing there is start, well, two things. One, I've got to find a distributor, then later on a printer. And I was determined to have it printed in New Zealand because I, years ago I did a course in um, resource management, um, natural resource management. So I was quite keen to have the whole thing printed and made in New Zealand. Um, I had to find editors, people who run their BDIs over it and spot the mistakes, um, a proofreading, someone who do the index properly. I mean, you can do it yourself, but really it's better off getting a proper indexer. Mm-hmm. Then publicists. And before I did all that, I started writing the book. Um, I went to a, um, a one-day course on self-publishing. Um, so that was quite interesting. And in I said, now, being all things in mind, um, how much does it cost to uh, print a book, or publish a book? So I was told between 10 and 30,000. So I thought, well, yes, I can cope with that. Well, my mother died, you see, there's a bit of money I could afford to publish the book. Mm-hmm. Okay, yes, silver lining. Oh my gosh. It yes. really sounds like you've done so much research into the self publishing process as well. Like everything that you've mentioned is exactly what we, you know, mentioned to people as, as well. You know, and the fact that you went and you've got an editor to do all of this stuff, a proper indexer. I mean, it just shows the dedication to this book. And I think that's fantastic. And, uh, yeah, no wonder your book has been doing so well. You've really well, I've sold given... over half the books I ordered, so that's all right. Yeah, it's not bad at all. Um, if there is any like one piece of advice that you hope your readers take away from your book, what do you think that is? Um, be ethical. So when you think of joining a board or a committee, if you think it'll look good on your CV, well that's right, but it's not really the reason why you should be um, on to be on a board or a committee. And then you've got to bear in mind. But once you're on the board or committee, it doesn't matter how you got elected or whether some sector group elected you or you had a bee in your bond about one particular aspect, you've got to go along with the board decisions. Now, if you disagree with the board or committee decision, you can have that disagreement recorded in the minutes, but publicly you speak as one. And if you feel a decision, the board's making decisions that you can't, you know, you, you just can't live with, then you've got one option. And that's to resign. Mm. So very clear when you're doing your research why you want to be on the board. Make sure your values align with the organisation because obviously you want your global society to be successful, but your values have your got to be very similar. Mm. And, um, and always do the right thing, the ethical or the moral thing. So if you're waving about something, then step back and say, well, what would someone outside looking in think about that decision? So ethics doing the right thing as I, I think that's a wonderful piece of advice. I think we should all live by that when we're doing things for the community, on a board. I think that being ethical is really important in today's society. So I love that piece of advice. Thank you. Um, are there any other topics that you think you'd like to explore in the world of writing? Uh, I know that this is probably the best you can do with this particular topic. I think it's fantastic, but do you have anything else that might be in the works or any other kind of things that you do along this kind of? One, yeah, what I'm doing is um, there's an organization called Community Governance, which is aimed seemingly primarily at the uh, charity side of things, but they do do have um, stuff for incorporated societies. But one of the things they do, they're running a, a, they run a mentoring course and so I put my name down to be a um, governance mentor. So I think the next course is in the next months or so, where you get trained. I think it's a week-long course sort of thing mm-hmm. over time. Um, and then you're unleashed on the unsuspecting um, protege <laughs> and give them a helping hand on governance from a sort of practical point of view. So you become a sounding board. Mm-hmm. Okay. And you may offer advice if, if that seems appropriate or suggestions. Yeah. Mm. Wow, wonderful. It seems like you're a really busy person. Um, you have a lot to do and and just a lot of advice to give, a lot of um, information at your fingertips. So um, thank you so much for writing this book and thank you for joining me and answering all my questions. Um, it's been a delight to talk to you. Well, thank you very much. It was good to have a chat. No problem. Okay. Thank you so much, Pierre.